Hello, my name is Andre Favela and this is my presentation on Bohr's atomic model. First, let me give you a brief history of the first atomic models. The first atomic model was created in 1803 by Dalton and was called the billiard ball model because he thought that the atom was a solid mass that could not be divided. Then came Thomson's atomic model in 1897 called the plum pudding model because he said that electrons were floating around in a positive sphere like raisins in plum pudding. Next was Rutherford's atomic model developed in 1911. This was called the nuclear model because he was the first to think of an atom having a nucleus in the middle. Then in 1913 came Niels Bohr's atomic model which by some people is known as either the planetary model or the Rutherford-Bohr model. The model discoverers of this model are Niels Bohr and Ernest Rutherford. Now here is the Rutherford-Bohr model. This is my version of Bohr's planetary atomic model. So here's the nucleus and the red ones are protons and the black ones are neutrons and the yellow ones that are orbiting around the nucleus are the electrons. Bohr thought that the atom was a nucleus surrounded by electrons that orbit in lines called energy cells like the planetary system. These cells are also known as the K shell, L shell, M shell, and N shell. They're also known as the 1, 2, 3, and the 4th shell. These shells have fixed energy levels so that the electron doesn't go off track. So that the electron doesn't go off track. This was Bohr's fix to the error in Rutherford's model, because in Rutherford's model, he didn't have any orbit for the electrons, so they would just roam around by themselves in the atom. Bohr also found out that the amount of electrons that the outer layer, outer orbit contains determines the properties of the element. For example, if there was two electrons in the N shell or the fourth shell, it would be an alkaline earth metal because there's two electrons in the other shell. This model is important because it has only few errors when compared to the atomic model that we use today. That is the end of my presentation and I hope you enjoyed.